On today's episode, we're going to turn this box of parts into... Try your other hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, let's try a clap. Oh, honey, I just looked up. YouTube says you have to have 50 followers for that to work. Alright, today we're going to be converting my pressure pot into a, um, into a um, casting pressure pot. Now, the basics for this are pretty simple. You need to have four things on your pressure pot. A way for the air to get in, a way to, for the air to get out if there's an emergency, a pressure regulator to tell you how much air is in there, and a stop to keep the air from coming out the second hole on a paint pressure pot. Right now we've got this old pot here that was originally set up for paint. We're going to break this down today, clean it up, and paint it before we go ahead and assemble the parts and put them on. Our pot is made of four different materials. We've got galvanized steel, regular steel, aluminum, and something which is metallic but not, but doesn't act like steel. So I'm assuming it's probably tin, possibly zinc, not sure. Um, it does rust, so we'll see what that is. We need to prep each of these a little bit differently. The zinc, we're going to need to scrub down with some Comet to remove any wax and oxidation on the outside and put a rough texture on it so that we can use, so that we can paint on it. We'll put down a um, latex primer and then put down our paint on top of that once that's dry. Our steel, or whatever this is, we're going to hit up with a little bit of, um, of navel jelly to dissolve the rust and then we're going to hit it with an appropriate primer and a paint layer on top of that and these parts here that are just regular steel we don't have any rust on them we're going to go ahead and treat these the same way that we're treating the zinc because these are well these are steel we'll see how they go First thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this material up with a little bit of a rust dissolving gel. Come on. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be working as well as I'd like. It turns out my rust dissolving gel has apparently dissolved the um, important part inside that makes the pump go. So we're going to do this a little bit less safely.
we'll have to let that phosphoric acid sit on there for a little while. Okay, we've been scrubbing on this for a little while and letting it sit, so now we need to take some water and rinse this off. I'm going to stop the camera now for a moment and clean up this acid mess. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to scrub down the outside of the pot and our aluminum parts. With some catching cleanser. Okay, now we're going to give these a few minutes here to dry, then we're going to come back and wipe them down with some mineral spirits before we go ahead and um, start paint, before we um, let them dry for painting. Okay, now that we've let this air dry for a few hours, we're going to go ahead and wipe everything down with mineral spirits. Okay, now we're going to let our mineral spirits dry for a few minutes, and then we're going to come back and put down our first layer of primer. Now that that's dry, you're probably wondering, why are we taking all this care to go ahead and paint a fairly sloppy looking pressure pot? Well, this is galvanized steel, which is a zinc coated product, and zinc does not like most primers. Um, in fact, it doesn't like any oil-based paints at all. The zinc will react to the oil in the paint and convert it to a type of soap, which just causes your paint to peel right off. So we needed to make sure everything was cleaned off, wiped down, and in great shape before we put down a latex-based primer. And for that, we're going to use Bullseye 123 from Zinsser. You guys probably all know this. Um, Bullseye is pretty popular on your lemon who uh, deals with MDF. Any of the Zinger and Kills products are. Um, Kills is better because of the shellac, but anyway. So everything gets sprayed down. You're going to spray down one coat, wait a little bit, flip it over, spray down another coat. And then you've got the thing entirely covered. Here it is. Always fun to do this in the wind.
Okay. Now we wait for 30 minutes. Okay. Let's do the other side. Okay, we're back, and it's time for our for our um, next step, which is to put down the paint coat, the color coat. So I'm going to use blue for these pieces and black for these. Well, except for the hood over there, that that's also going to be blue. But let's go ahead and we'll start putting these coats down. I've got my um, color color scheme going to be black first because it's easier to put the blue over the black than it is to put the black over the blue if you get any overspray. So let's get started. Okay, the black is an altered black. It's probably ready to go right now. Um, we could probably touch it within just a few minutes after it's done. The black's drying very quickly. Despite the way it looks on camera, this is the blue is technically a, a um, gloss, or maybe even an ultra gloss. I don't remember. Um, but the gloss coat over the um, over the galvanized steel is not going to come out as a smooth, even finish. It's going to have kind of a crinkle coat to it. And so I'm just going to let this be lumpy and bumpy, and then I'm going to go over it with a, um, with a flat finish to, um, to kind of seal that in and give a little bit of an extra protection for the blue. Um, I'll also go over the black because it's really just one coat, but one coat of the camouflage um, from Rust-Oleum is actually pretty good for a flat black. After we get these all dried up and, and um, clear coated, then it'll be time to start assembling some of the software. But the sun is going down, and so I guess I'm going to have to put this off until tomorrow to finish this up. Okay, we've got the uh, pot all painted up. I took off all the masking and did a um, quick test fit assembly, make sure all the threads were cleared out and could turn correctly. Um, now it is time for us to take this piece and convert it into something useful. This stuff is all cemented together here, and I cannot get this apart. I could probably heat it up, break it apart, um, but it's not worth it. So. We're just going to get rid of this and replace everything with brand new stuff. Now, as I mentioned before, there are three, there are a few things you need to have on a pressure pot. You need to have a safety, a safety release valve. You have a way for the air to get in, a way to get, way for it to get out when there's an emergency, a valve to keep it in while, while you want it to stay in, and something to tell you how much the pressure is. 
So we're gonna we're gonna um, tape up and put all this together. I want to do one of those YouTube claps where you just clap and it's all done. But I've been told that I can't do that because I don't have enough subscribers. So we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Now at this point, I'm just going to stop and say something. I know most of you guys have probably already put together your your own plumbing stuff and really don't need to know this, but just in case there's somebody out there who needs a reminder, the tape needs to go on in the same direction as the threads. So if the threads are going and if if the threads connect by going around this way, You've got to put your thread, your tape on that way. Yeah, this is going to be painful watching you get oh, for you guys watching me try and put this all together. But anyway, that's a that's a thing that should be fairly obvious to most people, but isn't necessarily fairly obvious to new people who've never had somebody say to them. Hey, the tape goes on in a particular way. This red stuff here is actually something that's supposed to take the place of the sealing tape, I believe. So I'm supposed to be able to just tighten this down in there and not have to worry about it. Okay, now we just go put it on the pot. Wait, there's one more step to make this perfect. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Have fun, and don't forget to keep making this world a better place one project at a time.
Where's the kaboom? There's supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! Build a robot. Build a robot.